up gamers? I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons we are going to be reviewing two expansions for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures, the Stan Sakai pack as well as Lunar Raft. Now these work with IDW Games Adv Universal Adventure Game System. Currently Team NT is the first one with Batman the Animated Series currently on Kickstarter. Now the game design was originally done by Kevin Wilson with this current version being updated and redesigned by Pete Walsh and Daniel Lansdowne. With that being said, Julie's going to tell you a little bit more about these two expansion character packs and about the original game as well. <laughs> so these expansions go with the original game. Uh, so obviously that means that they're one versus many uh, or cooperative because they go in the original game. They're intended for one to five players uh, for ages 14 and above. Now, if you haven't seen our Changes Constant review and explanation, I'll just briefly tell you about Team NT Adventures. You will either be playing as the heroes in a half shell or one of their allies against a player that is controlling all of the villains. Otherwise, you'll be taking on an AI controlled set of villains. You must complete the objectives of the scenario in order to win the game and maybe, maybe even get some uh, bonuses as you continue through the campaign. I think we've talked enough about the game itself. We're going to take a look at what's in these expansions and then get at you with our review. So what time is it, Julie? Time to grab our drinks. Grab our best friend. Okay, take it to the table. And take it to the table. Looking forward to talking about these guys. We had a lot of fun playing them. Now let's take a look at the components for the Stan Sakai expansion pack, as well as Loner Wrath. So we'll start with the content that comes in the Stan Sakai pack. Here we've got Leonardo's new character card. We do have his new miniature. So just a little different than the one that you get in the base game. He also has a new ability. In this case, any friendly Clan Hamato. So all the people related to the turtles will get to roll an extra die each time they roll dice. And if Leo is next to someone who is unaffiliated, in this case would be Miyamoto Usagi, or as I remember him from the original Team NT show back in the 80s, Usagi Ojimbo. So that's a really strong ability. Next, we've got Michelangelo. So we've got a different mini for him as well as a new special ability. So after action dice are rolled and any rerolls are made, Mikey may double the icons on any one of his die. If that die is shared, the, shared, the hero that's sharing it also gets the bonuses. So that's very strong. We have, of course, Donatello in a new pose. And his ability is Field Medic. So he may choose a friendly minion and heal them, rolling two battle dice to heal the character that is adjacent to him, which is very cool. Next, we've got Raphael, also in another pose. His ability this time lets him spend his ranged icons as if they were a katana, giving a lot of flexibility and versatility when it comes to attacking characters. And then, of course, we've got Usagi, Yojimbo. So his ability is whenever he is has no heroes within two spaces of him, he gets to roll an extra die which is very strong as well. Cool mini, love the swords. We also get dice for him. So he has the ability for the double attack, attack and defend, skateboard, the chi, and then of course, well, he actually has no regular defense, just attack and defend. So as you can see, very strong character. We also get the initiative cards, which we'll take a look at quickly. So one for each of the new turtles. You could use the old initiative cards. You really only need the one for Usagi, but it's just fun and it helps keep things clear. And of course, with Lona Raff, we get an initiative card for him as well. We also do get new hero abilities because we don't have ability cards for the turtles like we already do, which is why we only get the set for Usagi Ojimbo, and that's why there's none for Lona Raff as well. So we'll take a quick look at these abilities. So Dai Show, he makes two separate attacks with plus two melee strikes and may move one space afterwards. Pretty cool. Taiyo no Hikari, so you can use this when no enemy is adjacent to them. He will roll to die and regain life. If he regains life, he also regains focus. Very strong ability. Honor Bound, he may leap up to three spaces in a straight line. They may make an attack plus four. That's another great ability. 
Yojimbo, choose a friendly figure adjacent to you. That person will receive plus two defense. And then Usai, you will also roll two additional battle die when attacking next to their ally. Very cool. Zan Shin, so play this card when an enemy figure declares an attack. So this really, I'm not going to go through this whole thing, a lot of text, but it really focuses on when you're playing one versus many and you can cancel out some enemy cards. Wandering Ronin, while this card's in effect, you ignore all the different terrain types, slow and rough terrain. Bujutsu, while this card is effective, you gain an extra plus one defense. And after you successfully defend, you gain one focus, which is very cool as well. So as you can see, very strong character. Not sure yet, but after playing quite a few characters, he may be my favorite. Now let's take a quick look at Loner Raph, and then we're going to get on and review this content. So we do get a new mini for Raph. I love the look. The twin size it also reminds me a lot of the movie and it's definitely the look that they're going for now the advantage with lona raf and i did neglect to take out a component so while i explain what his ability is i'll get that out so he cannot share action dice with other players that's the deficiency of his character he can still share dice with them in terms of like what you rolled you can give to them but you cannot use other players dice but as you're a loner the advantage is you get an extra three dice so yes loner raf does also come with three more dice meaning that Raphael will roll six dice when you are playing loner raf but for example he cannot share any dice from Miyamoto Usagi, but you can share one of his dice with them. So there you have it. We've now gone ahead and reviewed the Stan Sakai pack as well as the Lona Raf pack. Now keep it right here as we'll be coming back at you with our review of these expansions. So the Stan Sakai pack and Lona Raf, what did you think of these additions to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures? Well, I would say the first thought is that they seem to be a little bit higher power than the others, I would say. Uh, I I would disagree a little bit, but I'll add to that uh, later well, on. Well, everybody, as you know, and those of you who saw the first review of the main game, otherwise you can always go back and see our main review, um, the, pow the characters all have um, printed... Um, Special abilities. Special abilities. Uh, and these ones, the ones that are printed, I felt were a little bit stronger. Uh, I played Mikey in both versions and Leonardo in both versions to be able to compare. Um, and I can say that Leo's version, the first one, we didn't use the ability all that often. Yeah, you almost never used it. I think actually only used it once. Uh, versus in this one where, uh, you know, anytime there's other turtles around, they get to roll an extra dice. Definitely came in clutch quite a few times. Yes, and now we may have played it wrong. It is written on Leonardo's sheet that whenever, so whenever, not when you're attacking, defending, this is whenever you roll die, roll an extra die, meaning we would often start scenarios with characters rolling four dice, meaning we're starting with six battle die because we were next to Leonardo, which is very strong. And then if Leo was next to uh, an unaffiliated ally, so someone that's not Clan Hamato, which is the turtles, like... Uh, Miyamoto uh, Usagi, well, then he got an extra die. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I, that one was pretty useful. Um, Michelangelo also, you know, it's, it's a nice little addition to be able to switch any of their single dice to a double. Uh, I thought he was more balanced, though. Like, his nimble was still just as good, I thought. Yeah, well, the, the nimble basically allowed extra movement, which made it fun as well. But in this one, it just kind of helped mitigate when you had a bad roll, you could make it better. Mm -hmm. uh, and from what I could see of you playing Loner Raph, because he took on basically a villain yeah. all by himself, seems that he could do pretty good on his own. That was, yeah, so just to talk about Loner Raph, he gets six dice, he can't share any dice. There was one mission that was really sort of, I feel like it was almost designed for the character. Raph is completely on his own board fighting an enemy. I decided to try him out. It was almost too powerful. Having six dice, I mean... We won the mission because of the turtles, but I think the villain had like one health, and if I'd rolled a little bit better, we would have ended earlier on. So, but that was a starting mission, so that's just keep that in mind. I tested it, and I thought that it might go a little wonky, and turns out it could definitely go wonky. There is some limitations because he cannot share dice, 
but you're getting an extra die every single time. So you can just think about it if you mix him with like another character like Stan Sakai Leo where he's now rolling seven dice, like, oh my God, like that's just... Well, he's not supposed to share dice, so he couldn't get an extra No, die. but it's he's not sharing dice doesn't mean he's exempt from the special ability. So there's just some ways it could go crazy and, you know, like you get a monster roll, you've got a lot of range. You can just basically maybe even one shot a boss. <laughs> Or potentially be like, Ninja Star, Ninja Star, Psy, Psy, and like, just take out a whole bunch of guys around you. Yep. And anything else you wanted to add on uh, your two characters? Otherwise, I'll talk a little bit about no, Donnie ahead. and uh, Raphael. Uh, also, I played Miyamoto Usagi. I'm surprised you didn't want to play the rabbit. He was awesome. I don't know him at all. So why would it? It's like you wanting me to play April. I don't know who April is. She watched the show with her I, brother, but she doesn't know April O'Neil. Like she's in the she's in the bloody credits. <laughs> so, in case, yeah. So I played Donnie, Raphael, and uh, Miyamoto Usagi from the Stan Sakai back. Now I only played with Donnie once. I actually felt that he was probably, in terms of a cooperative game, the weakest. But I could see his value in a competitive game. Him being a field medic and being able to heal other characters was definitely something that could come in useful. We didn't actually get to use the ability. I felt that that versus his being able to regain a focus or give another player one of his focus was just actually a lot better in most scenarios. Now, Stan Sakai Raph versus Standard Raph is way better. The fact that he can then stack his shurikens as katanas just gives him so much more versatility and no limitations and really makes him just an all around threat from anywhere he is on the board and definitely is a huge upgrade. As when we were playing one of the missions, he was literally like, oh, I've got all these double shurikens. Oh, I'll take out that guy. Oh, and then I'll move into range and I'll use these shurikens as katanas to take out that guy. It was just a little nutty. And then the nice thing with uh, Miyamoto Usagi, I thought his character was fairly well balanced, but he's still fairly strong. Like his ability, didn't come into effect all that often. At least when I was playing with him, we were often together, but he gets to roll two extra dice when he's off by himself doing the whole like Ronin thing. So that's a very strong ability as well. It also says whenever he rolls die. So, you know, that's almost two extra action dice when he's by himself, meaning he's just a wrecking machine. Also, his skills and abilities are very cool. Now, one thing we just didn't note, the turtles in their expansions do not get new skill cards. They get new hero cards only. So if you did not watch the component section, that's just a clarification for you. That's why we only got skill cards for Usagi. And I really liked his ability. The fact that he can regain focus, heal himself. He's just a solid all-around character. But he, while he's more balanced, he still definitely skews on the stronger side of the better characters. For example, if we go talk a little bit about the core game now, who would you say in terms of special abilities had the two best? I don't know. I really thought Mike, Michelangelo, Mikey had some pretty cool ones. Yeah, I think Mike and Donnie were very strong. And I think that Usagi is just right on that same level, if not maybe a tad I better. do like Leo's uh, card, that free card that allows him to re-roll once. Yeah. You know, it's like not having to have use a focus. No, but that's another thing to actually talk about and that's a good point that you brought up so when it comes to like the turtles in the core game i do feel that some have weaker abilities in terms of their player abilities but have stronger skills and access to more skills so there's a little bit of balance that way whereas some of these big abilities for the turtles combined with their skills almost throws things out of balance i guess that's why i feel that usagi is more fully balanced because he's the only one that also has a hero card as well as skills so I think we've talked enough about these expansions. So how would you rate these expansions, Julian? Well, I'm not gonna really give them a score. Are they something that you absolutely need to have in your collection or something that it's just a fun, nice to have? Because they're just characters. I can't really see giving them a score. There was no scenarios, no real extra added content to the game. It's just more variety. And I I mean, for me, I'd say it's a nice to have. It's There were fun characters but like we said the original the base game has fun skills and characters as well i think if i hadn't seen them i wouldn't miss them 
And once I've had them, I could still play the original characters and be okay with it. So I would say that uh, I agree with Julie. These are nice to have. They're not an essential addition to the game. I, if Usagi was available at a cheaper price just by himself, I would say that he's essential. He was one of my favorite characters. I loved him in the show, loved him in the comics. So if you love the character, I'd say definitely the Stan Sakai pack is a must buy. The turtle abilities are a lot of fun but I don't think it's gonna drastically change your experience with the game. If I had to give this, you know, more of a point score rating, and I'm not gonna give an actual number, just let you know it skews definitely on the above average side in terms of expansions. Okay. So with that being said, what time is it? It's time to remind people to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when there's new content. Also down below in the video description, you will find links to all of our social media feeds. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you want to see pictures of us playing as Lona Raff or the Stan Sakai Turtles, you can find them there. Also popping up in front of me are going to be a link back to our most recent released video, as well as a link to TMNT Adventures Changes Constant, our full review and how to play. So we now need to grab our drinks, grab our best friend. We're going to take it to the table. No, we're going to keep playing games. Keep playing games. Should have just went with Cowabunga, dude. Yeah, okay. You, you go with that one.